Well, let's start by thinking about the case again when the switch is opened. When the switch is opened, there's no current. When the switch is open, there's no current. Now let's think about what's going to happen to the current when we close the switch. Can current flow now? Yes. Can the current <laughs> jump? No. No, because the inductor prevents jumps in current. Therefore, we're going to have to have an asymptotic increase. Now the current has to have an asymptotic increase with no jumps because the inductor prevents jumps. I don't have to say whose current this is because they're all in series. They're all going to have the same current, everybody's current. So if this is a light bulb, what are we going to see happen in the light bulb over time? Um, over time, it'll get brighter? Yeah, it starts completely dim. And over time, it'll gradually get brighter and brighter as the inductor gradually lets the current build up more and more. The inductor doesn't prevent the current from changing at all. It just slows down the change in the current. What's the use of the inductor then? Well, you might use the inductor to make things that would otherwise be abrupt be smoother. An inductor can smooth out the changes in your current. If you're worried that your current is changing too abruptly, you can use an inductor to smooth that out. Now, at time zero, when we've just closed the switch, what's the voltage drop across the resistor going to be? Let's keep thinking of this as a 5-volt battery. This is a 5-volt battery. We've just closed the switch. What's going to be the voltage drop across this resistor? At time zero, it will be zero. That's the right answer. That's right. How did you know that? Because if the charge is zero, I mean at zero. If the current is zero. The Ohm's law tells us that when the current is zero, this voltage has to be zero. But in that case, what's the voltage across the inductor at time zero? Zero. What's the voltage across the resistor? Remember, we have a five volt battery. When we close the switch, there's zero voltage drop across the, uh, across the resistor. So on the, are you asking what's the voltage? What's the voltage drop across the inductor at that point? Five volts. That's right, not zero, which I think might have been your first guess. That's that ski lift analogy again. If the skiers are gaining five joules of energy per skier going up the ski lift, if they're not losing any energy at going down the resistor, they have to lose all of the energy on the inductor. So while this is at zero volts, this would have to be at five volts. Of course, while the switch was open, there was no voltage which means the voltage has jumped. Is it, is it, do inductors allow the voltage to jump? Yes, they only prevent the current from jumping. But it turns out that the only way to prevent the current from jumping is to allow the voltage to jump. We just showed that. So at time zero is, This is the graph for the voltage on the inductor. Now, what do we expect to happen here over time? Well, remember, why is this voltage existing at all? It's existing to prevent the current from changing. Well, right now, the current is trying very hard to change. You can see that because this is a very steep graph, so there's a lot of voltage. But eventually, the current is going to level off and not change anymore. Eventually, the current is going to level off and, not, and stop trying to change. Well, then we don't need any induced voltage anymore. This only exists, remember, to prevent the current from changing. Notice at this point, the derivative of this function is zero. When the function is flat, its derivative is zero. Well, we know a zero derivative for current gives us a zero inductor voltage.
So the voltage across the inductor has to move like this. Eventually, the inductor doesn't need to have any voltage anymore because the current isn't trying to change anymore. We only need this induced voltage across the inductor when the current is trying to change. The whole point of this voltage was to make it so that instead of the current jumping to its final position, it moved there smoothly. But once we've gotten to the final position, we don't need any more induced voltage across the inductor. So what's going to happen over time here? Well, over time, this voltage will be decreasing, say, to 3 volts. And then what's going to be the voltage at this point across the resistor? 2. And then when this goes down to 2 volts, what will this be? 3. So you can see this does not show the voltage across the resistor. If we were going to draw the graph for the resistor, it would be a upward sloping graph. So we have to very carefully label what the graph represents for every device. So here we have an asymptotic decrease, and here we have an asymptotic increase. So now we need the equation for this. Well, this would be V equals V max E to the negative L T over R. RT over L. Here's what the equation looks like for an inductor. If you compare this to the capacitor equation, you can see that the time constant here must be L divided by R. Or we can just memorize the time constant here is L, uh, is L divided by R. Because we could have written that this like this, while well, the time constant for the capacitor was this denominator. So this must be the time constant here, L divided by R. What would be the equation for this graph then? I equation for the resistor wouldn't look like this. It would look more like this, because it would be downward sloping. So we've seen an inductor prevents jumps in current by allowing a jump in voltage. And a capacitor prevents a jump in voltage by allowing a jump in current. So you can't have a free lunch. If you prevent the jump in one of these things, you have to allow the jump in the other thing. The basic story here again is, what's the purpose of an inductor? To slow down the process of going from your starting point to your destination. Our starting point here is zero current, and our destination is this maximum current. If there was no inductor, we would just jump immediately from here to here. But the inductor slows down that process so that we only get to the destination gradually. We've already learned what the purpose of a capacitor is. The purpose of a capacitor is to store energy that you can later use. The purpose of the inductor is to slow down the change in the current so that it takes time to get to the ultimate destination of the current. If you're worried that your circuit might be changing too abruptly, you can use an a inductor to smooth things out. Well, now we can again think about what happens if we remove the battery. Let's not worry about the switch here. Let's just remove the battery, but keep a loop. We're going to remove the battery and keep a loop. Now the current here was at its maximum. So the instant before we take the battery here, the current is at the maximum. Now let's think about what happens when we remove the battery. Well, a naive person would say, gee, the battery is gone. There's no reason for current to go anymore. The only thing that was making the current flow was the battery. So a naive person would say that, gee, there shouldn't be any current here anymore. However, so the naive person would think that we would go straight to here. But inductors don't allow jumps in current. So the inductor is going to force the current to only gradually go towards zero. Even though there's no longer any battery, now the inductor will itself 
keep the current going so that we only gradually move towards zero. Now let's think about how the inductor is going to do that. Well, at this point, is the current changing or not changing? At this point, it's not changing. So should there be an induced voltage or no induced voltage? So at this point, the inductor voltage graph should be down here. How about at this point, is the current changing? Yes. In fact, this is where the graph is steepest. So this is where this is changing the most. So this should be where we have the maximum induced voltage. So now we've figured out what the voltage on the inductor has to look like. 